The Holy Grail is a challenge that some Diablo 2 players have strived for years to complete. It's basically a charge to find all of the set and unique items in the game. Mr. Llama SC recently completed this extremely difficult challenge on stream, but oddly enough, I don't think he was really that excited about it. Congratulations, my friend. This got me thinking, what's next for someone that has found literally every single set and unique item possible? There are some endgame builds in Diablo 2 that require insane items that aren't necessarily set or unique in nature. While these items are not required to complete most builds, they are absolutely make or break for others. Or, they're just extremely rewarding to find. While it's possible to find all of the items on this list, the odds are extremely low. Here are five valuable items that most Diablo 2 players will never find. Let's dive in. Number one, Ghost Sin Claws. Ghost Sins are assassins that use the Whirlwind skill to do massive amounts of physical damage. Not to be confused with the Spider Sin, the Ghost Sin relies almost exclusively on Whirlwind to do most of her killing. But finding the right claws for this build can be extremely difficult. Tracking down a good base for the rune word Chaos is hard enough, but the real challenge comes from finding a Warfist weapon with just the right mods on it. These items typically are ethereal, replenish durability, and have two open sockets. Additionally, they must spawn with either the Cruel mod, giving them tons of additional physical damage, or the Fool's mod for even more damage and attack rating, with some players preferring both. If you find a pair of these with useful assassin skills on them too, the value goes through the roof. These are necessary for PvP ghost assassins and it's also why you don't see many of those builds kicking around. The cost of entry is just too high. Number two, six point rings. Certain dueling builds such as trap sins, BVCs, melee characters, or any other build that's trying to maximize breakpoints or damage outputs can rely heavily on rings that are extremely rare. Certain pieces of jewelry in Diablo 2 are typically graded on a six point scale to determine their value. Rare jewelry can spawn with up to six mods, and to oversimplify the grading system for each useful mod that spawns in this way, the piece of jewelry gets a point on the grading scale. So a six point ring would refer to a rare or crafted ring that has at least six highly rolled useful stats. Typically these include, but are not limited to, faster cast rate, minimum damage, attack rating, stats, life, mana, and resistances. These types of rings are extremely rare and far more valuable in the trading community than any unique ring you can find in the game. Number three, end game amulets. On that same six point grading scale, these would need to have at least a solid five points on them, one of which is almost always plus two to skills. Certain top tier dueling builds rely on rare or crafted amulets to meet certain cast breakpoints or just to grant them better benefits than Mara's. While it can feel extremely rewarding to craft a 220 amulet, those stats alone might not be enough for certain endgame builds. Players who are trying to min-max their characters will often be looking for resistances, stats, or life on them as well. To go further, some players even look for the teleport mod for their setups in order to bring their builds to absolution. Number four, top tier diadems. The name diadem is sort of a misnomer here as it can refer to circlets and tiaras as well. These helms will almost always have plus two to class skills on them along with two open sockets. To go further, these special helms are the only ones in the game that can spawn with certain mods on them. For example, faster cast rate, faster run walk, and enhanced damage are unique to these types of helms. Additionally, they can spawn with the visionary mod for extra attack rating, life, stats, mana, and resistances. And yes, even teleport charges. Certain caster builds may require 20% faster cast on these helms to meet breakpoints, while other builds may be looking for faster run walk or damage. While the range on what makes these helms truly great is very wide, you'll certainly know one when you see it. Number 5. Perfect Items 
While it's difficult to justify that any endgame build truly needs the items to be perfect, there's a certain level of gratification in coming across a rare and useful item that rolled perfectly. Furthermore, the value of some perfect items in the trading community is really unbelievable. While it goes without saying that the more useful perfect items are extremely valuable, there are some collectors out there that will pay premiums for extremely rare items that rolled perfectly. Some rune words or elite unique items that have four or more variables on them can fetch a fortune on JSB. Perfect versions of these items can be worth thousands of forum gold, while their non-perfect counterparts are only fractions of that price. Regardless of if you ever plan to sell it, the intrinsic value of finding a perfect item is really based on how many stats or mods can roll within a range and how rare that item is. But I know one thing for certain, if you ever find an item such as Wolf Howl that is 100% perfect, not only is the item worth a lot, but it just feels good to find. And there you have it, five items that most Diablo 2 players will never find. When Diablo 2 Resurrected drops, I will be on a quest to acquire some of these items. And if you'd like to join me in that, be sure that you're following me on Twitch, as we'll likely be searching for a very, very long time on there. What items do you think should be on this list? Be sure to let me know some of the outrageously rare items that come to mind down in the comments. If I agree with you, I'll put your item in the official description of this video. We can call it the Golden Grail list. <laughs> That'll keep us busy for a few years. I want to thank you guys so much for watching my video. I'll catch you in the next one. Oh, oh my God. First run of the day. You know, <laughs> it's always worth it killing those physical immunes, guys. So kidding. It's like usually never worth it. <laughs>